I still kind of hold the line of free market anti-capitalists, right? A lot of people actually get that, right? Because a lot of the folks that are in crypto understand institutional distrust and regulatory capture and a number of other things that purportedly, you know, make this you make capitalism quote unquote crony capitalism, right? And I, uh, I think that the, the part of this movement that is the most interesting is the part of it that is trying to invest in public goods who views what they're doing as public goods. And so there is a strong disincentive never to block anything up behind IP. There's a strong disincentive for like, you know, making sure that it's freely available and cheap and broadly accessible to people who can't pay uh, the gas fees, right? If you're not aware of what gas fees are, you have, you're think of it the specifically uh, proof of work and proof of stake chains as uh, distributed computers where you have to pay a certain amount to make transactions, right? Whereas when you're on Facebook or what have you, you're making transactions, but they're paid for in other ways, i.e. you're being monetized and therefore please hang around in our wall, in our wall garden, right? And so this whole like public goods approach, I think is very interesting because like you said, what you were saying earlier, where we can appeal to people's sense of contrarianism a little bit. We can, it's very easy, but this is an undercurrent to a lot of things, especially in American politics, where you ask people like, hey, should healthcare be free? And you never specify how, right? You don't say Medicare for all. You don't say like, like Canada. You don't say like whatever. Even even the garden variety reactionary <laughs> will be like, yes, absolutely, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so like, I feel like there's a lot of good you can do here with the word public goods if you don't call them welfare, if you don't call them like, you know, social security or like well, something else, right? <laughs>